If you would have told me my future is going to involve a rusty kitchen knife and a rusty wire, I would have assumed I was on drugs. But instead, I'm the geek crew leader. And I love you guys, so let's do this. Soil compaction is one of those things that can annihilate any sort of plant growth. It affects the microbes, it affects the plant's nutrient uptake, their ability to penetrate the soil, pun intended. Do you till? Do you not till? What do you add, etc., and so forth. Now, join the Geek Crew, hit that subscribe button, they're an awesome crew. They are my friends. My only friends, but they're still my friends. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So compaction comes from poor soil structure. Soil structure is made from plant roots, microbes, and the byproducts of those things existing in the soil system. They kind of create a glue, and the glue holds the soil together. And if you ever dig in a natural mineral soil, you will find aggregates and aggregates are those chunks that you see. Those aren't a bad thing. That's not compaction. <laughs> this here is aggregation. That, these are the blocks that you see when you dig. They come in all shapes and sizes. That is some that are attached to root. This one's a little nub. And this one looks like my dog's dookie, but it's not my dog's dookie. It's, it's aggregation and it's a beautiful thing. I live for this shit. One thing you can look for in your aggregates or in your soil profile is actually coloration and smell. That actually is why I smelt it. I didn't smell it to confirm whether or not it was dog dookie to see what it smelled like. And it should smell like nothing or and or earth. It could smell like earth as well. And this smells wonderful. If you smell rotted uh, material, if you see gray, if you see red, these are indications of really high water content and potentially compaction and or just a soil texture that's not quite there yet. But you can work on that. Uh, that video will tell you how to work on that. But yeah, that's kind of, that's good. Got soup. It's compacted below this layer, but this stuff above that layer is wonderful. And the reason why it's compacted actually has to do with that monstrosity. That is aggregation and that is totally normal. And fungi produces something called gloman, which takes now those little tiny particles that the bacteria put together and puts them together in a macro sense, if you will. When we lose the glues or the fungi and we collapse it all together, we have a compacted soil. Now, compacted soil can benefit you. Crazy, I know. But the way it benefits you is through seed starting, for example. So when you start seeds outdoors, you make your channel and then you put your seeds in and then you will put the soil over top. If you do this correctly, you should be packing. And when you start them in cells, you should be packing because the interface between the soil and the seed is what we call soil to seed contact. I know, very scientific terminology, but that is important because that means that the soil is in contact with the seed. And if the soil is in contact with the seed, that means water's in contact with the seed. And so we get better rates of germination. This is why if you ever look in agriculture at a cedar going across the earth, it has packer wheels at the back of it. And they're adjusted to give very light pressure to actually compact the soil on the subsurface around the seed because that form of compaction is valuable. However, soil that is heavily trafficked, meaning soil that equipment drives over, that you walk on, that pets walk on, that wheelbarrows go over, you get the idea. That soil begins to compact in the lower levels. So not just the subsoil, it starts co collecting or compacting in the lower levels as well. And now this compaction can obviously cause lack of oxygen, take longer to warm up in many cases as well. If you watch this channel, you know seeds have a specific temperature that they need the soil to be at to germinate. And in Canada, you wanna get the soil at temp as quick as possible. This is frozen, so I need to find different, different dirt. Packed soils, unfortunately, don't make that happen. Soil also becomes more compacted the deeper into the soil system you get. Again, very normal. So the soil on the surface has more root material, it has more humus, it has more organic matter, and so it's light, it's fluffy, it's movable, other than some aggregates, that's normal. As you get down, you ever as a kid, you know, hit, hit the clay or hit the hard level? Oh, that is hard. 
And it's hard and not in a good way. My husband would be jealous. That's normal. That is supposed to be there and it doesn't harm anything. It's just how soil works. Now, sometimes that layer, particularly that lower layer, can become so hard, it's considered a hard pan, which is like the big scary word that absolutely decimates farmer's fields and makes gardening near to impossible. There's two forms of hard pans. One's naturally created and one is man-made, unfortunately. Now, the naturally created one is called a solazenic soil. Now, these are something that soil scientists know exists, particularly in Canada. And if you're in Saskatchewan, I'm sorry, but you have the highest density of these. And I'll put a solazenic soil map up <laughs> on the screen. If you are in one of those areas, Go digging because you want to find out if you have this. Now, with that being said, um, and if you want to know more about the orders of soil and what may be in your area, then let me know because I can do a whole video on that and that would be a lot of fun. So these are actually in the brown and the dark brown soil zones. And I did a video on soil zones. <laughs> so you can check that out as well to see if you're in one of those zones and whether or not you'd have a solazenic soil. Now I've seen solazenic soil naturally in a grassland setting and wowzers, it is hard. It is literal cement. I could see where that could cause massive issues. So that one's naturally occurring. Mother Nature made that. There's not much we can do about it because the actual soil profile in and of itself is quite deep and the solazenic layer in the lower layer tends to be quite large. So nothing's going to fix that one. You just want to move your garden. Now man-made, yes, tillage, can cause a man-made hard pan. The man-made hard pan is caused by extensive, extensive tillage. A one-time tillage, the odd use of a broad fork or a pitchfork to fluff the soil is not in any capacity going to result in a hard pan. Walking across soil won't result in a hard pan. It'll compact things, don't get me wrong, but it's not irreversible. It's not a hard pan like tillage actually destroys the residue or the coating on the actual soil particulate of the fungi and the bacteria when it's exposed to oxygen. And so now you also just lost a very integral part of your soil system. The place where soil scientists, agronomists, buttheads is the hard pan theory, um, the man-made hard pan theory. So some say it's, it's extensive tillage, Others say it's just natural soil cultivation, regardless of if you till or not, the use of heavy equipment on soil surfaces will result in a hard pan just because of the fact that there's heavy equipment on the soil surface. I'm not getting into that too much today, but just keep in mind, if you are putting very heavy stuff on your soil, bobcats, you name it, there's a potential that you could be creating irreversible compacted soil if you are doing it over and over and over and over again. Now, other forms of soil compaction you can see is actually the crust. So that kind of crusty looking stuff <laughs> you have after a rainfall is an indication of compaction that was actually caused by rain. Yeah, it's kind of cool. There's so much force behind rain that it can cause minute levels of compaction on the soil surface. Now, if you see crusting of the soil, this is not an indication that the layers below that are compacted. That's just an indication that your top layer was you know, beat up by the rain. Don't, uh, don't go into thinking you have a hard pan just because you see that. That is just soil doing what soil does. And one of the ways to alleviate that compaction force from rain is to use mulch. And when you use mulch, you won't get the crust and the actual fissures is when the clay dries and it kind of like glues itself together because that's what it is. Um, it glues itself together and so that's when you get the cracks. So if you just mulch it, then you won't actually see that anymore. It'll just completely disappear. It's raining right now and I actually might have like an example of this that I can show you. Just give me a second. I'll show you how what I'm doing here. It was a percolation test. I'll show you what that is here in a little bit, but see how this is all kind of cracked? That is because this is all wet and it kind of all just glued itself together. So this is together. And then if I was to grab this soil from anywhere else, this is what that soil looks like naturally. But as the water hits it or um, 
glues it together, if you will. That's kind of what happens, so. How do you tell you have compaction? So you can physically look at a plant to see if it has compaction. Lodging is a great indication of soil compaction, particularly hard pans. Nutrient deficiencies, nitrogen and potassium in particular are an indication of a hard pan or some form of compaction. The other one is pooling water. Now, <laughs> pooling water in Canada or the Northern US after the snow melt is not compacted soil. That's probably frozen soil, which is hard and uh, definitely not gonna let the water through. So what you could do is actually wait until you get a heavy rainfall or water the space and see if anything pools. Failed to record in the, the comfort of my room, but you know what? I live for this shit. This is what I wake up for in the morning. I have a hole. And at the bottom of this hole is some pretty heavy duty clay. And this is actually something you can do. Take a bucket of water and fill that hole up. And see how quickly it drains. The speed in which this drains is going to tell you how much clay you have, how compacted your soil is, do you have a hard pan? And you can tell because you will slowly see this line go down. I'll show you how a good soil moves because this ain't it. Okay, so what we just did there is called a percolation test. And essentially it's just pouring water in a hole to see how quickly it drains. This is gonna be a pretty good indication of whether or not you have anything hard underneath and or what the texture of your soil. So you have a heavy clay sand in your soil. You don't want to drink too quickly because too quickly means you can't retain moisture, which isn't good for plants and not quick enough means wet roots and anaerobic conditions. Make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna dig a hole here. These are some new beds we set up. This is just um, garden soil, pretty basic stuff. You can see it's kind of falling in on itself. There's no aggregation. This will aggregate eventually. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is already going down. And I can guarantee you by the time we come back at the end of the video, this one will be empty and that one will still be full. This is a good soil. That one's a little compacted. That's where that one is at. I have filled an entire bucket of water and dug another hole and my hole is still full and usually that's a good thing but in this case it's not and then on a large scale you can sometimes see uneven growth so if you look at a field farmer's field for example um, in the tracks where the heavy equipment has driven those plants tend to be a little bit smaller a little bit lower that's a result of compaction or you can kind of see waviness depending on the soil texture or what's underneath that soil on a large scale now there are ways to test this you know, with numbers, which is the preferred method. Um, so you can get a, a soil penetrometer, <laughs> what it's called, and uh, it's basically a pogo stick with a metal tip on the front, and the metal tip is actually a calibrated tip with a gauge, and you push it in and it'll tell you pounds per square inch. It's actually really cool. Dickie John is the brand that I've always used. You can get them. They're quite expensive though. I think they're around $500. So probably not of any use to you as a gardener, but could be a fun tool to put on the Christmas list. Obviously you probably don't have access to that one. So the next one is actually to dig a soil profile. Now a soil profile is going to allow you to see all the different layers. The top layer is going to be full of organic material and humus. And so it's going to be light and fluffy, but you are gonna see a transition where things do look a little bit more snug. What you wanna do is take a knife, tell it who's boss, stick the knife in. If the knife just glides in, your soil's not compacted in that space. If you go to show that soil profile's who's boss and it shows you who's boss, that's probably an indication of compaction and you can kind of do that through the entire soil profile. There is the compacted soil. So you can see right there, it's a little bit better. Here is, you can almost, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like clunking. It's probably a tree root to be honest because that doesn't feel like soil, but. So then what you wanna do is actually penetrate the layer this way and see how far you can get it in. So I can get it in far. 
it's definitely a soil <laughs> that has a little bit of weight to it. But you know what? That's not bad. That is growable. That is good. And to clean off the soil surface, literally all you do is this. And you just want to get rid of the blended layers. Of course, it's way too dark out for you to see that. But when you do it on the garden, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, just go around and see, see this side. That is much, much, much more compact. Yeah, see, this is way more compacted on this side. So yeah, see, this is way more compacted. So now if this was my garden that I cared about, <laughs> I wouldn't go this way. I would start digging more holes this way to figure out what's going on this direction. Alternatively, you can have a soil like this. And this here is obviously very freshly placed soil. I just purchased it and put it in this weekend. And you could sink it to the hilt. And guess what? <laughs> That's not a good thing. This is too loose. This means it's gonna be a nightmare for me to keep moisture inside of. It's going to be a nightmare for me to keep things happy and healthy. So I'm looking forward to aggregation in this bed and getting some roots in place. My bed that's probably the best is my tomato bed um, in regards to compaction. So this here is what I would consider perfect compaction. So I can get it in really nicely, relative ease besides the fact that it's frozen. And I can get it kind of up into here, but I can't easily sink it all the way. I can definitely get the handle in closer to the edges I get, the easier it is, and that makes sense because it's a raised bed, farther in the middle, and this is nice. That's what I like to see. Now I do get that that is a job for someone who is very mobile and there are people with mobility issues or maybe you just want a really quick way to test this and that is with wire you can get the flag wire you could use a coat hanger something small thin not a bamboo stick or anything crazy like that just a small piece of metal okay the next one is the wire trick so this is a flagpole wire but you can literally use a coat hanger whatever the case is and you're just going to shove it in the ground and get mine to there mark it off and you can see a nice good layer there where the roots can penetrate, good depth. It's not the whole length of the bed, but pretty darn close. And that is awesome. There's a little bit of resistance, but not too much. You can see there's a little bit more resistance and that is as far as I can get it. So I went from here to here. I mean, that's not bad. It's a perennial bed with a giant tree in it. See, and then some areas and getting good. So, you know, this isn't horrible. I kind of lied to you guys. I said it was bad. I think I actually hit a root over here when I was doing that percolation test. Yeah, I did. There's a root right here. Okay, I guess this isn't horrible. You know what? I could, I could deal with this. I could work with this. That is actually pretty nice. What I cannot work with is the fact that there's no freaking light here. <laughs> it's like my little uh, ginger den where I escape from the sun. And I'm actually not lying, my hammock. It's like, my hammock's right here. It literally is how I stay out of the sun, is in this area. And no plants grow because of it. Now, the fixes. The one fix that people argue about in the scientific world is that freeze-thaw relieves compaction. So there are agronomists and soil scientists out there that think just your natural cycles of freeze thaw will break up and aggregate compaction, particularly compaction that hasn't reached a hard pan designation. I don't have much commentary on this because I guess it, it makes sense that that's the case. And I mean, it's sound science, I think anyways, but there's going to be people on this channel from the US because there's many, many Americans. It's not just for Canadians. Americans that won't have a free thaw cycle. So if you're in that uh, situation, one way you can do this is actually by avoiding the homogenous mixture and keeping your aggregates. So if you see aggregation, don't suddenly freak out and say you have compacted soil. Keep the aggregation in place. When you go to plant, you can kind of make a good soil compact layer on that top surface layer. And I'll do a video on this once things are plantable outside <laughs> and I'll show you what to do, but just don't break up the aggregation, leave it in place, break up what you need to do to get the job done. But other than that, just 
leave it how it is. If you are dealing with a soil that you know is low in organic material, particularly a clay soil that you know is low in organic material, then you may want to incorporate organics. And I did a video on microbes and that microbe video, everything in there would help with compaction because microbes can't survive in compaction. So they kind of actually go hand in hand. But if you follow kind of the instructions over there, that would help alleviate the issue. So you probably do need to incorporate some organics, particularly if you're not putting your garden in a space that is got grass or something on it prior to. So actually incorporating that through tillage is a great way to start or purchasing a garden soil and building up. So garden soils will always 100% be a mix of other manure, compost and topsoil. So they usually will be combined. They will be sifted. So larger organics will be taken out, which actually is pretty valuable. I could do a whole video on what soils to buy. The next one is to stay off wet soil. So right now is springtime and you don't want to be walking on the soil if it's wet. Get off my lawn. If you've just watered, don't walk on the soil. Make rows in between crops that are grown in ground and not in raised beds because every time you step down you are compacting and you aren't compacting just that surface layer you are compacting a little bit lower. Next one is cutting plants off at the base in the fall which I did in my how to close down a garden in fall video so that would be a great way to help ensure that the roots stay in place and that the soil structure stays in place which will alleviate compaction and then also planting deep rooted plants. So there are radishes out there um, that are being marketed to farmers, for example, that help break compaction, in particular hard pans. So tillage radish is the name for the one. So you can use radishes, uh, carrots, something with a big tap root to actually break up compaction. You may wanna leave those in place rather than harvest them. If you harvest them, there's nothing wrong with that. It'll help, it'll give you the benefit that you need. And that actually will fracture the soil vertically and horizontally. So I did the opposite. <laughs> vertically, oh my God, vertically and horizontally. So, and they make fancy machines now that till vertically and horizontally for farmers, but regardless. And the last one is actually mulch. So soil moisture is part of your soil solution. And if you've been on this channel long enough, you know that I talk about soil in a solution, not as individual particulates. And the solution includes water. And so water being a part of the soil structure is key. So a moist soil is a soil that hasn't clapped in on itself and that's a happy, healthy soil. <laughs> so mulch and keeping the moisture up is gonna be important. I'm not saying to irrigate and you know water every second day, but I am saying that mulching or um, doing the necessary things that it takes to keep the moisture in the ground obviously is gonna help you because the more swole you keep them, the better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it helps you out with your soil compaction questions, thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.